Hey guys, welcome back to the Cool Classic Kids Show, and today we're talking about a Ubisoft executive because they have had some comments in regards to video game ownership, and we are in an unprecedented time in which physical media is dwindling. It's being forced to dwindle. Um, ever since, honestly, the COVID, this has been something that a lot of mega corporations have been sort of forcing us to go from physical to digital content, and it is concerning to me. There is zero guarantee that we will forever own the digital content that we're, it is claimed that we own. Uh, my biggest concern is, well, Xbox and PlayStation seem to be making it a lot easier to get you suspended from your account. What protection is there for all of the purchases you've made on these accounts when they're, becoming, they're starting to become pretty ban heavy? Um, referencing really the Baldur's Gate 3 player that had uploaded some um, videos to the cloud for Baldur's Gate 3 on their Xbox and, well, got clapped for a whole year because of it. Stuff like that is really concerning. Not being able to access your content, your media, whenever you feel like it after having purchased it is ridiculous. And there's many instances in which we have to question the powers that be and really how much access and power we do have over the content it is claimed that we own. But to get into the article, Ubisoft exec says gamers need to get comfortable not owning their games for subscriptions to take off. Guys, you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds a whole lot like you will own nothing and you will be happy. That's as, that's as close as it gets. I mean, come on, guys. You will own nothing and be happy. That's pretty much what I'm seeing here. It's like in They Live where you put on the glasses and then you see the truth. That, that's pretty much what it is. And a big goal for a lot of these mega corporations in the gaming space is pushing subscription services. Um, I personally have indulged in the Ubisoft Plus um, a couple of times because, well, I don't know about you guys, but buying a Ubisoft game, paying $70, um, the thought of it, makes my brain bleed um to buy a game that looks like the game that came out last year from ubisoft and the game that came out last last year from ubisoft and then you, you can go back like 15 years and be like oh this this looks like the same game again but sometimes i get curious about a ubisoft game um while for example avatar the avatar game um, looked a lot like far cry i was interested in it looked bright looked beautiful so i paid for ubisoft plus to give it a go and I got bored rather quickly, but hey, my thought process was I paid like, what, $15 to give it a try to see if I like it. If I liked it, I would have eventually bought it for myself. Or if I didn't like it, well, I only spent $15 instead of spending $70, something that none of your games seem to be worth. But that's a me thing. I don't know if you guys feel the same way about Ubisoft's games, but I will say subscription services can be beneficial. I spend less money and taking chances in video games. And in a market in which gaming is just downright trying to rip you the fuck off, bend you over a table, no lube at any point whatsoever, um, I like the idea of at least having options on, hey man, maybe uh, paying you know, this little bit of money to give things a try, especially in this uh, current climate of these developers and these mega corporations do not respect you or your money as opposed to paying $70 for games, which is still a ridiculous price point to me, especially with the current state of gaming. Um, I enjoy both. I ideally would like to have all options. Physical, digital, subscription services, I think they all have their place, but mega corporations are trying to force one out. Being, well, physical media, and maybe at some point digital media too. Who knows how ballsy these assholes will get. But to continue on, they say an executive at Assassin's Creed maker Ubisoft has said gamers will need to get comfortable not owning their games before video game subscriptions truly take off. Speaking to discuss the launch of Ubisoft's new UB Ubisoft Plus Premium and Ubisoft Plus Classic subscription, well, how, how many subscription services does Ubisoft have? What are we doing? Are, are you kidding me? What is that, like three? I want to go look this up, but it's just a waste of my time. 
three. That's two right there, and then the one that they already have. What is Ubisoft Plus Premium? This is this is like insanity, guys. But they go on to say Felipe Tremblay, director of subscriptions at Ubisoft, explains to GI.biz what needs to happen before subscription services become a more significant slice of the video game business. He says, I don't have a crystal ball. But when you look at the different subscription services that are out there, we've had a rapid expansion over the last couple of years. But it's still relatively small compared to other models, Trimbley said. So we're seeing expansion on consoles as the likes of PlayStation and Xbox bring new people in. On PC, from a Ubisoft standpoint, it's already been great. We're looking to reach out more on PC. So we see opportunity there and so your thought process this dude's thought process is well we need to give them less options so they'll be forced into an option in the pc space pc being an open platform being one's personal computer you're about to get fucked if you fuck with us he said one of the things we saw is that gamers are used to a little bit like dvd having and owning their games yeah yeah because you know that's what we've always known this is what has always been since the dawn of gaming, you know, besides the whole arcade thing. It's almost. It's almost like these mega corporation and executives want to bring back the arcade model, <laughs> but in, in a more insane manner. Just think about it. You go to an arcade. The game is present. You put in your quarter, your couple of quarters or whatever have you. And you get to play the game for that limited amount of time until you lose or until you run out of time, whatever have you. Yeah, it, it's it's almost like subscription services are like going to an arcade. <laughs> That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. They got comfortable not owning their CD collection or DVD collection. That's a transformation that's been a bit slower to happen in games. Well, I mean, hey, man, you buy a DVD, you know, you paid $20 for it. You bought a CD, you paid, what, $15, $20 for it. Um, you're asking for people to, <laughs> you're asking people to change up, to be forced into one model for things, something that's way more expensive than your average CD or average DVD. Gaming is a far more expensive hobby. That is why it's be, it is extremely difficult to force people to not buy games the way that they want to buy games. He said, as gamers grow comfortable in that aspect, you don't lose your progress. If you resume your game at another time, your progress file is still there. That's not been deleted. You don't lose what you've built in the game or your engagement with the game. So it's about feeling comfortable with not owning your game. <laughs> Oh man, and my thing is, guys, do not feel comfortable with not with not owning your game. Do not trust mega corporations. Do not trust these corporate execs that get paid millions upon millions of dollars to figure out ways to siphon money from you. He said, "I still have two boxes of DVDs." Oh, oh, was 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 that a way to try and relate to the average consumer? What a clown! He said, "I definitely understand the gamer's perspective with that." But as people embrace that model, they will see that these games will exist, the service will continue, and you'll be able to access them when you feel like it. That's reassuring. Where's the promise of that? Where's the guarantee? Matter of fact, given how boring Ubisoft tends to be with a lot of their games, where's the guarantee that your company will even exist in 20 years? Where's the promise of that? Yeah. Um, there is no reassurance. The reassurance you think that exists is not clarified at all, at least thus far. Let's continue. They said streaming is also a thing that works really well with subscription. So you pay when you need it as opposed to paying all the time. Oh, God. Everything I hate about gaming, streaming. <laughs> it's fair to say, Trimbley's comments, haven't gone down well with some gamers who prefer to buy their video games on disc as opposed to downloading them or streaming them. 
but it's worth pointing out that Ubisoft, like many other video game publishers, does still release their games on disc. And while digital sales have grown as a portion of overall sales over the years, a significant portion of players still prefer to own their games because it's important to a lot of gamers, man. There's there's a lot of old school gamers still. It's almost like, you know, modern gaming has forsaken the older millennial and Gen X so badly, man. It's it's disrespectful as hell. Like the past 10 years, they wanted to forget that we exist. And it, it's almost it honestly is insulting. All these games that are being made for like Gen Z and then they wonder why they fail <laughs> because they're they're made to be these insufferable piles of crap that Gen Z is into, but nobody else is into. But yet you keep concentrating on this demographic while not respecting the previous you know generations of gamers that are still out here. And yes, like while I've moved on to PC gaming, if I do personally really like a video game, I will go out and buy a physical copy of it, given I normally wait for a sale, especially if I did already buy it on PC. But that's how I, I roll, you know, like for me, it's like I really love this. I want to cherish it forever uh, through buying a physical copy. So on a sale, I'll pick it up, throw in my collection. You'll see it maybe back here or over in front of me. But that's how I roll, because physical media is important to me. It's always been important to me. It will always be important to me to some extent. And they say Trembley's comments also bring up an issue of video game preservation. As many games go down the digital route or rely upon an internet connection to work, so does the risk of these games are lost to time when their servers are shut down. Developer Remini Entertainment was heavily criticized for releasing Alan Wake to a digital-only video game to keep the price below 70 And look, man, at the end of the day, Piracy will always have a prevalence in in preservation. Um, and look, with the way this dude is talking, with the way he's talking, yeah, um, it makes, it, it says, yeah, um, people should steal more, okay, for the sake of game preservation. We, the numbers and the carelessness of all these companies when it comes to preservation of their own history is so pathetic. It, yes, honestly, it, it's like, genuinely speaking, piracy needs to be a thing. The amount, the lack of access there is to games that have come out, you know, um, since before, like, 2005, is so minuscule that really, if not for piracy, we'd never see these games or never have any access to all these games. And none of these companies care. Matter of fact, they, I have to feel as though they are directly complicit with wanting older games to disappear they don't care about their own history they don't care about any of that stuff they don't care about gaming a as a piece of art that that is my biggest concern they do not care about gaming as an art form it is an art form they don't care about preserving it they don't care about uh, about us having these experiences and learning how gaming became went from this to becoming what it is now they don't care about any of that. It doesn't matter to them. And that is why preservation, piracy, it is something that needs to be normalized. The physical versus digital debate is sure to grow even more vicarious as more publishers consider, or perhaps inevitably, all, uh, an inevitable all-digital future. Last year, the leaked news of Microsoft's plans for a slim version of the Xbox Series X shocked gamers because it mentioned the hardware wouldn't have a Blu-ray drive. As Xbox boss Phil Spencer said at the time, these plans ha may have changed. And yeah, I hope for their sake that it has. But this is what they want, man. They want to force you into liking things that they want you to like. They don't want you... They, they don't want you to think for yourself. They just want you to like what they are promoting and to pay into their service, whatever have you at the time. They don't want you to think about older titles. They don't want, unless, unless they're re-releasing it on their own shit. Like, it, I have so many thoughts about this and it, it's so aggravating to me that it almost feels disrespectful when you really are trying to say, we don't want you 
to have things the way that you want them. That's really what it boils down to. In its, in its very basic discussion form, what he's saying is, we do not want you to have things the way that you want it, but we want your money. It is aggravating. And, and the reality is that there's a huge portion of the community that doesn't care. And really, uh, to, I, sometimes I feel like I'm speaking in the void. And um, I have to be concerned with the future. I really wish that there would be some protections put in place um, that didn't involve breaking breaking the law, technically, because obviously piracy uh, is breaking the law. But there's no real protections other than that and buying physical media. Now, obviously, physical media deteriorates over time. There is no perfect world scenario. Even if, even if you pirate all, you know, all the games across um, the many decades of gaming and put it on, you know, a SSD hard disk, even those, even those will deteriorate over time. That, that's just what it is. Nothing is is perfect. That means we. That's why we need all of the options. No option is perfect. But all the options means more of a chance to preserve this art form that we know and love. And yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. I'm sorry if I sounded a little all over the place. I really don't mean to be, but this is something that always grinds my gears, I guess. But yeah, guys, Xbox event tomorrow. I will be live streaming it. I have awesome announcements for you guys, so definitely stay tuned for that. It is going to be awesome. Join me. As we see what is next for Xbox Studios, I'm hoping hoping to see some dope ass avowed gameplay, man. Like not just like cut up in pieces, no, like like a vertical slice. That's what I need. And then, so that's tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night we have the Two Real for Feels podcast. We're, I think I'm gonna have some cool guests on. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Hopefully everything works out. But there's a lot of stuff to look forward to, guys. If you can like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me over on Twitter or Kick if you'd like to continue the conversation. And guys, well, being said, I'm out. Peace.